My mom was so afraid she had this knife and she was just shaking, pointing it at him, basically to get away, stay away. Uh, I believe if I was not there that day, I don't think one of my parents would be here. Either my mom or my dad would not. It was like the final straw. All my life, my father, um, I've known him to be on drugs. Um, he, uh, I, I, I was in, I know domestic violence through him. Um, my father um, was an adulterer. Um, I have at least one um, half brother, um, um, kid out of wedlock. My father was uh, irresponsible. Um, didn't didn't hold his jobs too long. Um, and my father never really took uh, ownership of mistakes. It was always somebody else's fault. That's pretty much how I know my father to be. Um, my father's articulate. My father's intelligent. My father's a great athlete. Dallas Cowboys were looking at my dad when he was a sophomore in college. And um, I have several uncles that played professional sports. One was a Heisman Trophy candidate. And they'll say that my dad was the best football player of the three. But that's, that's the side I admired about my dad, the, the athlete. Um, and the fact that he was articulate and he was inte he is intelligent. Um, but the other side is what I know him most as. Um, addicted to drugs, um, never own up to mistakes, it's always somebody else's fault. And um, abused my mom um, up until the, the very last moment of our immediate family being together in the same house. Um, it ended with a fight and if I wasn't there um, if I weren't there, one of my parents wouldn't be here today. And it got to that point. Um, so that's what I pretty much know my dad to be. Why do you think he was that way? Um, I think it, um, <clears throat> my dad never knew how to be a, a father. He never knew how to be a man. Um, his father was killed uh, when he was two, um, so he wasn't there. And his stepfather um, died not too long um, after he married my grandmother. Um, and my dad just really never had a chance. Um, he never had a father figure there. You know, my grandmother was trying to, 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 to raise him and to be a man. And also, my grandmother always came to the rescue. So I, I look at it as enabling. I mean, she loves her, her kids. She, and, and I know that's why she does it. But she always came to his rescue. And my dad, I don't think, ever really had to fall on his face and um, get back up and, 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 and get through it um, and make, make wise decisions. Um, he always could call on, on grandma and she would come to the rescue. What's your relationship with him now? Um, me and my dad, we talk from time to time. We can talk and we can laugh. Um, I get frustrated with him. I'm no longer angry at him, but I'm frustrated at him. Uh, we talk maybe a few times a year. There was a time when I didn't talk to him for probably a year, year and a half. Um, I'm not sure if he's off drugs or not. Um, I haven't seen my dad in nine years. Um, but we, 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 we talk, we're cordial. I let him know I love him, and he tells me he loves me. And that's about the extent of it. There's no intimacy, there's no closeness, and there's no real trust. Uh, what's the one word you would use to describe your father? Um, if I had to pick one word, I would probably say um, angry. Um, but other words come to mind like um, irresponsible, um, uh, stubborn, prideful, wow. athletic. It's another word I would describe my dad. And now tell me again about your dad's dad and what, the, what went on there? Well, my, my dad um, never really knew his father. Um, his father was killed in South Carolina. Um, um, my grandmother say that it was a cover-up, that he was killed by some racist white folks back in South Carolina. They say he drowned. The newspapers say he drowned um, fishing. But my grandfather served in World War II and swam to safety in Pearl Harbor in the midst of fire. So, you know, my grandmother to this day, she doesn't want to talk about it. Um, that's, 
as common that was common back then but um he didn't really know him and he learned at nine years old that his father was killed and his stepfather died um not too many years after he married my grandmother but i don't think they had a really really good relationship based on what my dad told me so he grew up without a father also basically yeah what are the good things you learned from your father good things from my father um my father was a great athlete so he was very very um competitive um tenacious in competition i mean he had the heart of a lion out there and i think i really got that from him and and, and I, I take that that same lion's heart um in different areas of my life um, i'm not i don't see myself being a quitter um and there's a a, a passion and a drive that comes with that um, uh, and a lack of fear, I guess, not, not afraid of a whole lot. Um, maybe nervous for some things, but not afraid. So I think I got that um, from my dad, some good things from my dad in that area. What are the bad things you learned from your father? Um, my father had a, a short fuse, um, especially as it relates to my mom, um, or really anybody. <laughs> but I believe I picked that up just from watching, just uh, from a spiritual stand standpoint, I think that's something that kind of just a transference on to me. That's what was modeled for me. Um, at the same time, I think um, outside of the spiritual element, just the modeling that for me. So I picked that up. So I've seen that in my relationships. I've seen that um, not just on the court, but just in life over the course of my life. I've, I've seen that, that short fuse come up. And um, I believe I've gotten that from my dad. It's one thing. What do you wish your dad would have told you but didn't? Um, I don't recall my dad saying he's proud of me or he was proud of me. Maybe once, maybe graduation from high school. Um, other than that, and I'm not saying he never did, but I don't remember. And when I was in my 30s, my dad told me um, after I had forgiven him and started the healing process, my dad said, um, I knew you were special when you were a kid, when you were a baby. And it was kind of bittersweet for me because it was something I wish he had told me growing up. I wish that I wish he was championing me. I wish he was a fan, um, in a sense, um, a supporter in that sense, cheering me on. But I never really got that uh, from my dad. Tell me the story again about the basketball incident with you and your dad? Um, I remember playing, uh, well, several, several times, once in high school. Um, he's only, he only came to one high school game, so that whole last two years of high school was kind of disappointing. Um, in college, um, he was supposed to come to a college game, and he told me that he couldn't get in but when I found out from sources, he never even came to the game. I had slipped and, and, and told him something uh, about the tickets, and he used it as an opportunity to say, oh, yeah, I couldn't get in, so I didn't make it inside. But the reality is he never even left home to come to the game, which was two hours, like two hours away. Um, and then uh, in college, we played at the NCAA tournament. Um, either it was NCAA tournament or our conference championship game, but it was on TV, and everybody had been watching it. And I remember calling my dad and asking him, did he see the game? And he just casually, oh, no, nah, I didn't catch it. And it crushed me because it could have been 10,000 people. It could have been a million people watch the game. But the one person I wanted to watch the game was my dad, and, and he was the only person that didn't see it, it seemed like, of my family and friends. So that was a, it was crushing to, uh, to, to experience that. And in college, I was four hours away driving from, from home. And in four years, he never once came to a game four hours away. You tell me, too, about a story about, I think you said you were running a touchdown. You looked over to see if he, tell me that again. When I was nine, nine or 10, Little League football, the first year I played organized sports, and I ran, I had four touchdowns that game. And I ran one touchdown, and it's my first one. And as soon as I scored, 
I turned around and looked for my dad's jacket. He had a Kansas City Chiefs jacket on. It was my uncle's jacket from when he played for the Chiefs. And my dad was wearing it. And when I looked, he was in the next field over with his back to my game, talking with his friends who were coaching their little league team in a practice. So I ran the touchdown. As soon as I ran the touchdown, I dropped the ball and I turned and I looked for dad. And I looked around and I saw the back of his, I saw his back. And I watched for a little while. And, the, and by the time I walked to the sideline, not one time did, did I see him keep looking back to see if he was, you know, to kind of keep his eye on my game. He, he was just talking as if, it was almost like he was just there just to say he was there. But he really wasn't in the game. And um, another crushing, crushing blow for a nine-year-old. And all he wants is dad's approval. What do you wish your dad would have showed you but didn't? I wish my dad, um, in a broad stroke, would have showed me how to be a man, what it meant to just be a respectable man, um, how to respect, respect myself, um, how to deal with women, how to treat women. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot of respect for women. Um, about average, the average guy would just, you know, treat women a certain way, especially if you're an athlete, that was me. Um, but, but I wish he would have taught me how to be different than all the other guys. All the other guys are doing this, they're, they're sleeping around, having sex. I wish he would have taught me about purity and, and respecting myself that way and respecting that, that young lady. I wish he would have taught me um, not to curse not to use profanity. I was real good at it by the time I was in fourth grade. I wish he would have taught me um, self-control. Um, all the things that I know now that I so want to teach my kids, I wish my dad would have taught me. Um, God willing, I have kids, um, but I wish my dad would have taught me those things. What is something that your dad did with you and or your siblings that you'll never do with your children? I will never so much as allow my kids to sniff me disrespecting my wife. Um, I've never put my hands on a woman to hit her. Um, I never want them to hear me like raise my voice and disrespect her. Um, I don't ever want them to see that. Um, I don't want to model anger and rage for my kids. Um, yeah, I, I don't want my kids to see me do drugs or even drink alcohol. I, I don't do drugs. I, did, I never really had a drug problem. Experimented for a little bit in college, but never had a drug problem. Alcohol was my problem. Um, and I remember drinking certain drinks because I remember seeing my dad drink those drinks. Um, no other, no other reason. Didn't like the taste, but I remember the images of my dad carrying that bottle in his hand. And that was pretty much the only reason why I chose that drink out of all the drinks in the liquor store, because that's what my dad drank. Is there something that your dad did with you guys that you would do with your kids? When I was 15, um, I'll say this, when I was eight or nine, my dad took me to the basketball court once, and when I couldn't shoot the ball the way he wanted me to shoot with the right form, because really I wasn't strong enough to do it that way, literally I remember being out there no more than 15, 20 minutes, and we left because he got so frustrated because I couldn't shoot it the way he was teaching me to. And I remember walking away feeling dejected and saying to myself, I just can't. I don't, not that I don't want to, I can't. Well, when I was 15, 14, 15, uh, my dad took me to, um, when he was living in Maryland, he took me to the parks in Maryland, around Maryland, D.C., and me and my dad played. We'd never played together on the court, but we played ball that day together as if we played together every day, and we won about four games straight. We ran the court, me and my dad. And there was a couple other guys on the team, but it was really me and him. We played like LeBron and Dwayne Wade together. And I wish um, 
we had more of that, that's something I would do with my kids. I would participate in those activities. I would be engaged. Um, at least that's my desire. Um, I would hope to. Tell me about the incident that happened in that game when you got disoriented somewhat. And oh, there was another time we went to the park. So I, it was about three or four times we went uh, to the park to play, different parks to play. And I remember, I guess, overheated, didn't have enough water, but I blanked, kind of blanked out where I, um, I couldn't even see my hands in front of my face. It was just a blur. It, I literally was blind for a few seconds and I, I freaked out. And in that moment, man, my dad, it was like he just instinctively kicked in. He came over, grabbed me, made sure I was okay. Um, he got some, uh, I guess an ice pack or some cold water and just kind of put it and kind of told me to lay there, just relax, calm me down. He said, everything's going to be okay, man. Everything's going to be okay. And he, he, and he gave me, he had me a, a nickname for me at that time called Ace. He used to call me Ace. And, um, man, I felt, I felt on top of the world because my dad stepped in. Even if it wasn't anything he could really do, it was the fact that he tried, he wanted to, he just, it just kicked in instinctively. And um, I wish I wish I had more more of those moments. The worst experience with my dad was um, the last time that my immediate family was was together in the same house. And I had just decided to move to Maryland to be with my family, and we would all be living together because I stayed back and lived with my grandparents. And it was a big fight the night before, and it spilled into the next day. My sisters were crying and they were scared. My mom was so afraid she had this knife and she was just shaking, pointing it at him, basically to get away, stay away. Uh, I believe if I was not there that day, um, and I believe that's why I think I was moving up there to live with them, but I believe God set that up for me to be there because if I were not there, I don't think one of my parents would be here. Either my mom or my dad would not. It was like the final straw. It was the last time all of us were together in the same house. That's my last memory of my family together. And because he was, you know, I, we blame him. I blame him for that. I don't care what my mom did. He was the one that was treating, you know, domestic violence, um, abusing her. And that's, that, my, that was my worst memory, I think, um, with my dad. Um, the best memory um, would be some of what I said earlier with coming to the rescue, so to speak, and playing ball together and, and running the court. And those were two moments in my teens when I felt like, uh, yeah, it's me and my pops. Um, and it reminded me of when I was a kid, um, when he used to play, when he was in his 20s, and he would play in the playground, and I would be there just watching and couldn't wait till one day I could play because my dad played on that court. So those were some good memories. What do you wish your dad would have done differently? I wish my dad would not have gotten on drugs. It's funny because my mom told me that my dad always advised her, whatever you do, never use cocaine. And it's the very advice that he did not follow because I, I guess this is when cocaine really started um, kicking in in the 70s. I don't know, maybe I'm a little off, um, but he, he advised my mom that, and he started using it, and he became addicted, seriously addicted to drugs, even more than he had been, combined with alcohol and the, and the rage. So I wish he hadn't used drugs. I wish he hadn't abused my mom. I wish he had gotten help for the, like, counseling, um, but that was unheard of back then, a man going to counseling for emotional issues or whatever. It's unheard of. If you could say one thing to your father right now, what would it be? Without a doubt, I would try my best to assure him that I love him. I don't know if he hears that much at all. Um, there's been so much in his life that hasn't gone right. Um, a lot of it is his just bad decisions, 
but some of it is, uh, I think, the fruit of darkness. Um, a lot of things happen outside of his control, I will say that. But I don't know if he hears truly, genuinely, I love you. So without a doubt, and um, I would, and I tell him now, and now I mean it when I tell him over the phone, um, but it's different. I would want to say it face to face and, 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 and hug him and say, man, I love you no matter what. I love you, um, and I don't blame you. You don't owe me anything. Maybe that, maybe that more so than I love you, because I tell him I love you. Maybe just letting him know you don't owe me anything. I don't hold you. You know, even if I talk about some of those things in the past, maybe it comes up in our conversation. Maybe it's a part of my healing process, and maybe it's unwise. I don't know. Um, but you don't owe me anything. You know, I've healed. God has delivered me. You know, he's my father who never disappoints me, so I don't want him to walk with any guilt and shame. And I think he might still be walking with some guilt and shame, unconfessed guilt and shame. We talk about a father wound. Do you think your dad had a father wound? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, my grandmother told me that he, when he found out at nine that his dad was killed when he was two, she said from that point on, he, he was an angry kid. And I don't know my dad to not be angry. You know, I know my dad to tell jokes with his friends and laugh, and, you know, he, he had that side too. But it didn't take long. It didn't take much to get to see that side come out. Uh, the wrong thing said, and again, that's why I said earlier, I see some of that in me. But um, I absolutely believe he had a, a father wound. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me the story um, that you told about when you first realized that you had a father with, it, with the acting. Oh, you know, I, I'm a very passionate and intense guy. It comes out when I preach, when I play basketball, when I teach, it doesn't take a whole lot. You can talk about Michael Jordan versus Magic Johnson, who's better. And I'm a, I'm a Michael Jordan uh, fan, so it'll come out there, too. <laughs> but it never dawned on me that some of that intensity and passion, um, when, it, when it's channeled the wrong way or comes from a wrong place, um, was some underlying bitterness and anger that I had. And one day in an acting class in New York, there's a, a, an exercise called Unauthorized Autobiography where you sit with someone, your scene is to sit with someone and they're going to represent the person who's done you the most grievous wrong in your life that you believe. And without question, the guy that sat in front of me, older white guy, it could have been a, a, a young white girl or a young Asian girl. It could have been an elderly black woman. And I probably would have they, I would have depicted them as my dad. And I began to just speak my heart from places I had never even imagined it coming from. And I spoke my heart, and um, people were in there crying. I ended up in tears, and it was one of the most powerful acting scenes in the class, but it was so powerful for me because it caused me to now deal with what was unearthed in that scene. And um, that's when I began to realize this is where it's coming from. Because there were things in me that just, sometimes I just wanted to fight. I just wanted to hit somebody. And um, never knew where that came from. And I started to, to then process during that, during that time. When you hear the word father, what thoughts come to mind? Um, ideally, protector provider um, in reference to your dad what thoughts what what thoughts come oh out? abusive drug addict um, never owned up to responsibility or never owned up to mistakes never admitted mistakes now um, when it comes to your heavenly father what do you think faithful faithful um, I believe, I, 
I, I have a disconnect with my dad. There's no real connection with him. Love him dearly, but there's no intimate connection with him. Um, pretty much absent, both emotionally and physically for, for much of my life. But with God, I believe I can connect with God anywhere at any time. It could be in a, in a crowded place. And I believe I can feel intimate with him, knowing that he's there with me. He's in me and he's, he's there with me. So just faithful, if, if the first word, faithful. How has that changed your perspective of Father? My experience through discipleship, because I had it modeled. Um, my, my first mentor, Pastor Brooks, um, modeled for me what it meant to, um, to be a man. Um, and he said to me um, something that contradicted what my mom even said. Um, she would say, you're just like your dad. When she would get upset with me, you're just like your daddy, just like your father. And that would hurt me So I did not want to be like my dad. No matter what, I wasn't going to be like him. And my mentor, my first mentor, was the first person to say, you are not your father. You're better than that. It rocked my world. It wasn't scripture verses. It wasn't um, anything Christianese. It was the, 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 the practical truth you are not your dad. So the person I was running from, I didn't have to run anymore. And it, it blew me away. I, I, I stared at him for a few minutes, and I had to process that. I'd never heard that before. And that, that, that really helped me. Um, but, but then he began to model for me. Even with mistakes that he may have made, I understood that. But he began to model for me and teach me. And so now my perspective of father is just totally different. Um, I feel free um, because before I had no clue and knew that there was an ideal father, but because I didn't see it, didn't know what it looked like, there's no way I knew how to be a father. I could be a daddy, but I, if the word father came up, that w that would be I'd be clueless. How did that connection, that influence of what your dad was like, how did that then transfer as far as what you thought God was like? Because of the, the absentee, the, the absence, I should say, because of the disconnect, the distance between me and my dad emotionally, spiritually, um, I didn't really have that with God. I didn't even know it was possible. So whenever the word father was spoken, my, my mind would go right to my father. So I could not separate the two. I mean, I, I told my dad, love you too, when we got off the phone. But it didn't come from any place. It was just what you say when you get off the phone. So the first time a pastor or a preacher or anyone suggested that you tell, you say, to say, I love you, father, was weird. Couldn't say it. I literally could not get the words out of my mouth initially. I had to force the words out. And after I said it, I had to think about what I just said. Because it did not make sense to me. There was there, I couldn't make the connection that I could actually say and mean that I love you, Father. Because of the bitterness that I had towards the person who played the role of uh, the father in, 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 in my life. Because he was absent, because he wasn't there, and maybe he was abusive, did did that transfer into what you thought God was like too? Or distance, or, you know what I mean? I think overall, uh, and I'm not going to put all of that on, because I just didn't really know God. Right. But it, it, some of that played into it. Um, I definitely didn't see the grace of God. I saw God more as someone who um, you do wrong, you're going to pay for it. Even though that wasn't what my dad necessarily did directly with me, but I saw it modeled in the house with my mom. Um, and again, I didn't have any sense of God is right here with me. Foreign, foreign concept. 
How do you think your relationship with your father has impacted your life? Wow. Um, at first, it caused me to protect myself. Can't trust anybody. Um, they will disappoint you. Um, I battled with paranoia, me against the world. The minute someone does something, betrays me, or what have you, I now put everyone in that category. They're going to do the same thing. They don't really care about me. Um, so it, it, it brought on a sense of paranoia, and it caused me to really put up walls and protect myself. Um, I could get in and out of relationships. I could cut relations off, relationships off very easily. What's, what is your desire for your kids as a father? That I love my kids so much I get on their nerves. <laughs> like, okay, Daddy, we know, we know, we know. Um, no, my, my, my desire is to, um, to have the balance of, of, of discipline to making sure they're not out of control and they, they're respectful kids. And there are things about my upbringing, and, and it was the village type of thing with aunts and grandparents, and manners were, were, were a big deal. The way you spoke to, to some, I couldn't say yes or yeah. I had to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, to adults. Um, but just the idea, not the specifics, but the idea of the discipline and making sure they're well-mannered and, and understanding why. Um, but then the grace, allowing them to mess up and not walk around feeling like they needed to work so hard to get dad's approval or if you mess up, there's punishment. I don't want that mentality. Um, I want them to have that balance of I extend grace to my kids. They understand that and my love, but also they understand I have to discipline. And in between that, the thread of understanding, making sure that they understand what's going on, not just do this or do that, but taking the time to help them understand why. For men who are, who, first of all, some real honest introspection to see if there, if there is a daddy wound. Because dad, dad may have been there in your life and you may not realize there's certain things that he didn't do that you may hold him accountable for and may not have ever forgiven him. But some true honest introspection um, to see if there's even a wound that may have some underlying subtle bitterness that manifests in different ways in your life. Um, if so, men who feel like that forgive. If you have to just ask God to help you get in, in, even to the place of forgiveness um, for those who do realize that they have some daddy issues. Um, get to know your dad when they were a kid. See how they were raised. See what they were subjected, subjected to. Um, did they have their father? Were they taught? Because they can only give you what they have. And if they didn't have anything, they couldn't. Have, they they only did what they knew to do, and that will um, foster compassion. It should foster compassion in your heart towards them to forgive them, and you'll start to see them as that kid that didn't have a chance. Um, and then the other part, the dads who um, may have neglected, may have abused, and never owned up to it. Be honest with yourselves, um, and if you have, um, make amends. Bring a, uh, allow healing to happen. Um, you never know what your kids or your wives, your your wife, um, may be harboring in their hearts because of a wound that you brought on, and in, un, intentionally or unintentionally. Watch the Father Effect movie for free on YouTube.